Hi, you're with Chandeep and Goodly, and let's take a look at a very interesting solution of a problem here, which is how can you change pivot table values with a small slicer and a VBA code? So I'll quickly explain the case to you. We have uh, the employee codes here. We have the name, the band, and the CTC of that employee. And we have like 1800 uh, records over here. Now using this um, data, I've made a pivot table and I'll just quickly show you the pivot table. So uh, I have taken the bands and uh, I have kept them in the rows. And against the band, I have the values, uh, which is the average CTC. Now, what I've done is uh, using a slicer, I can change the calculation that is going inside the pivot table. So if right now I have an average, I can change that to a count. So this is the count the max, the min, and the sum. So this is pretty interesting. Now I'm gonna teach you that how did I do this, uh, attached a slicer to a pivot table using a VBA code. So there are a couple of things that you need to learn upon even before I start doing that. So I've set up a, a couple of dummy calculations on the right. On the right, I have, uh, the first thing that I have is a small table. The table shows two things. The first one is calc column and the second one is a scenario column. The calc column contains the name of the calculation. This is nothing but a manual entry. So I've manually written down sum, count, average, max, min. And against every calculation, I've also written down a scenario number. The scenario number is nothing but uh, a serial number which is attached to this calculation. Nothing fancy here. So sum stands for one, count stands for two, average stands for three. There is no order that I've specified which matters. I mean, you can give any calculation, any scenario number, but they have to be in order. That's about it. And using this uh, data, I created another pivot table, which is right here. And what I did was in that pivot table, I took the calc and I put them in the rows. That's about it. And then I also attached a slicer to my calculation. So I right click on the cal and say that add a slicer. Now what is going to happen is that uh, whatever I choose in the slicer that is going to go in the pivot table. So when I choose, let's say min, min goes here. When I choose max, max goes here. When I choose count, count goes here. That's what is happening. Now, as of now, this slicer looks a little crude. What I've done is I've also formatted the slicer a little bit. So let's just work with this slicer instead of this slicer. So the slices are exactly the same. So I'm just going to delete this slicer. So the slicer is now attached to the pivot table and the whatever I select here goes right inside my pivot table. There are two more calculations that I did apart from setting up this dummy data and the pivot table, which is the first one is I want to find out that currently in my main pivot table, what calculation is running. So as soon as I change this to average, the pivot table will change to average. So let's say when I click on average, I want to have a value average displayed here. And what I've done is I've used the left function inside the first cell of the pivot table and extracted the first word from here. So if it's an average, it will give me average. If it's a sum, it will give me sum and things like that. And the second thing that I have done is I want to find out that what calculation is selected in the slicer, the position number of that or the scenario number of that. So this is the place where my slicer is throwing up the value. And I want to find out that if I'm selecting average in my slicer, what is the scenario number of that, right? So I've used a simple VLOOKUP. The VLOOKUP runs on this cell finds out the scenario number from this table and it gives me that average is running on position number three. So I get number three here. That's all that I've done. So uh, made a pivot table first and uh, then I made a dummy table. So this is my dummy where I have the calc and the scenario. Using this, I made another pivot table where I uh, placed the calcs in the rows and I attached a slicer to that and then did two calculations. The first one is to find out what calculation is it extracting the first word here. And the second is finding out what calculation is selected in the slicer and the scenario number of that. Now uh, comes the interesting part, which is how am I tying everything together with a VBA code? That means when you select anything here in the slicer, how does everything works together and the calculation inside the pivot table changes so that this work, how is this work tied to this pivot table? So let's just take a look at the macro. So I'm pressing Alt F11, which is the shortcut to open up uh, the Visual Basic screen. Now, please note that I am working on sheet number one and my code is not written in the module. It's written in sheet number one, right? 
why is it that because uh, this is a private sub and i want this code to only run when the value changes in this uh, place where the pivot table is lying. So when I change uh, max to account, the value will change to account here. And that's when I want to run the code. All right, so a couple of things here. Uh, this is the place where I'm specifying that if the value changes in the selection cell. So I've also named these cells. This is called as a selection. Uh, this is called as a selection number. So you can say selection number. And this is the calculation type, which is currently running inside my pivot table. All right. So I'm saying that uh, if the value changes in the selection, uh, only then run the code. Otherwise, do not run the code. Specified some of the variables here and then set those variables to different objects. Now he, from here and the actual code runs. So I'm saying that if the selection, which is this cell, is equal to the calc type that means both of them are equal that means do not do anything and purely exit the code so if you have already selected max here and you're again and again selecting max then do nothing and please exit the sub exit the macro otherwise if you have count here that means this is going to be count and this is going to be something else in that case what i want you to do is I want you to check the selection number, which is my selection number, which is right here. And uh, if the selection number is one, that means if the case is one, then do a sum. If the case is two, then do a count. If the case is three, then do an average, max or a min, right? So one, two, three, four, five, and the five calculation here. Now, if you want to add more calculations here, that means you want to have distinct count or some standard deviation or anything else, you can just add that here. And then in your VBA code, what I want you to do is I want you to write case five, oh sorry, case six, and then press enter and then pivot table dot function and then equals to and write the calculation that you want to have. So that calculation will be exactly as the calculation that you specified here. That's how you update this code, right? That's about it. Uh, that's the code and that ties everything together with this uh, little dummy calculation that I've done. Now, when you change the count to uh, something else, this changes and the average changes and the min changes and the sum changes the calculation inside the pivot table. Well, I hope you like this. If you have any questions around this, please feel free to put them down in the comments. Or even if you're struggling to implement this in your own data, do not hesitate to write to me and I'll be more than happy to help you out. Thank you so much for watching this and you take care of yourselves. Bye bye.